you saw him on the platform and it was like it was in slow motion. It was, yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't know what it was exactly, but um, normally it's the same basis. You get your train every day and you recognise other people from your commute. And then just one day there was this, this new man walking up the platform and he was beautiful and, and I thought, he looks lovely and... So yeah. you started to make a bit more effort? I did, on, I did, yeah. Put some nice clothes on, trying to sort of catch his eye a little bit. I did, I was a jeans and converse girl before that and then I thought, right, I'll make more of an effort in the morning, so I did. Trying um, to catch his eye? Trying to catch his eye, but he was always in a book, he was always reading something lovely that I reading? had read. He was reading A Hundred Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez when I first saw him and I thought, he seems so lovely and he's lost in a book, so he... he you, you, you thought that only someone with a good soul or good heart could be reading a book like that? Exactly. Because you'd read it at university? Yes, yeah. And you're talking about him at work, all your workmates, yeah, saying that so you called I, him train man? I called him train man. I worked on a teen magazine at the time and my, my colleagues were amazing and we'd, I'd go into work and they'd say, how's train man today? <laughs> What was he wearing? What was he wearing? <laughs> did he look up? And it was always, oh no, I didn't talk to him. But you did have a bit of a plan because uh, you had to, you thought, thought, right, how can I get him to talk to me? And you thought, if I drop my ticket, yeah. sort of at his toes. Yeah, a canny friend gave me that advice. Yeah, he's got to pick it up and return it yeah. and then conversation will flow. Yes. Not quite what happened. Not quite what happened. I dropped my ticket, it sat on the floor for what felt like an excruciating amount of time. And then he did pick it up and he handed it to me and I kind of just squeaked because I was so nervous <laughs> and I just said, thanks. And, uh, and that, that was it. That was it. But this went on for, for a year. Yeah. To, and it's affecting your... Because um, you were happily single yeah. until you met him and yeah. then you didn't want to be. But, yeah. um, but you uh, on, go out on dates. Yeah. It, it, it would just be one date because they weren't train men. Exactly. And I'd, I'd go for a date on a date and, and I'd think, yeah, he's not train man. And then... I'd say to my friends, it was there'd be no second date, and they'd, they'd be exasperated and say, "Oh, come on! You don't even know Train Man. You know, give that guy another chance." So something's got to give here. So, yes. and what happens? It's May two thousand and four. Yes. And it's your birthday. Yes. So you get a bit of courage. A bit of courage. I thought everyone should do something a little bit frivolous on their birthday, um, something adventurous. Anyway, I, I thought I'm going to write a letter and give it to him on the train on my birthday as we're approaching King's Cross Station walk off once I've given it to him because I don't want to stand there over him when he's opening the letter. Yes. The it note. said, it's my birthday and I think everyone should do something frivolous on their birthday yeah. and this is my thing. I think you look lovely. If you'd like to go for a drink, here's my email address. If not, happy travels and I'll leave you in solitude. Yeah. And so it was five o'clock that you know, a very long day for Longest you waiting for, for an email back and then he replied and what did he say? He replied, um, the subject line for the email was the guy on the train so I knew immediately Immediately it was him, heart stopped, foolishly told all my colleagues who were sitting around saying, train man's emailed me. Um, and then he said, thank you, that was a lovely thing to do, but unfortunately I have a girlfriend, but um, <gasps> happy birthday, and that was such a brave thing, Still I'd so never nice. have this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to read what he said, the actual okay. words were what he said, <laughs> thank you, that was a lovely thing to do. I'd never have the guts to do something like that, but unfortunately I have a girlfriend and I don't think she'd like it if we went for a drink. Mm. Happy birthday, hope you have a nice day. Oh, right, yeah. so like heartbreaking really, because it's like all of this build up. Yeah. And it took a long time. I mean, you went on a few dates after that, still nothing, still, still not halfway, <laughs> I know. And then eight months later, yeah, he was you get single. An email. Yeah, so he was now single, and again, I didn't expect this email at all. Um, he was always still lost in a book on the train, and then I had so awkward. I would have thought after that little bit of a, oh, bit of correspondence. How did you deal with that? The first day after the note was was painful, um, but I thought I can't go in another carriage because if then he's hiding in another carriage and we end up at the back of the train hiding from each other, oh, that would be even ridiculous. worse. I thought I have to see him for the for the rest of my commute. Um, I'll bite the bullet and go in the same train. So I did go in the same carriage and he smiled nervously and I smiled nervously. But, um, but then we moved on and I just got lost in my book, he was lost in his book. But then eight months later he was single and he emailed me and said, if you still fancy that drink, <gasps> Would you like to go out? My circumstances have changed and it would be lovely to go out for a drink. And you did go out for a drink and it's not, it wasn't awkward and you didn't squeak. Didn't squeak. You had masses in common and you yeah. got on incredibly well. Yeah. He was everything you wanted him to be. He was. And he'd noticed your sparkly eyes on the train. <laughs> That's what he said on, my first, on our first date, yeah. yeah. And then three months later he moves in. Yes, yeah. And then three years later you get engaged. Yes. 
We went travelling for a year and he proposed while we were away. And there's Train Man. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. And we can't call him Train Man anymore because you call him Beautiful Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so there's Beautiful Mark yeah. and you looking beautiful too. So you travelled together, you, he proposed to you on a train in Australia. Yeah. You get married. Get married. And now you've got two gorgeous children. Yes, two boys. Exhausting, yeah, but lovely. So I mean, that's yeah. just the most gorgeous story. <laughs> Look at them. What does he think about, uh, about you? And I know that um, it's not totally autobiographical, yeah. your, your book. I mean, yeah. this, so this is more juicy. Fiction. Yeah, it had to be a bit juicier. Yeah. Um, Maya, the, the main character, she, her life had to be a little bit more exciting than mine. So, yeah, it's been fun. What does he think? Uh, he, he loves it, actually. He didn't read it until, until I got my book deal. And then he read it, and I, because mainly it was me stopping him from reading it, because I thought, it's not his genre, you know, it's women's commercial fiction. He might not, um, it might not be his bag. He likes Latin American literature. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he, he loved it, and he, he, he said he loved it. And, and it's, it's strange for him to, to be fictionalised. Yeah. Yeah. But, but actually, everything I'm saying about James, the protagonist, is is lovely. A uh, lovely things. How I, how really I feel about Mark. So. Is he? Is he watching today? Yeah, he is. is yeah. He? Hiya, Mark. Hi, beautiful Mark. <laughs> <laughs>